And we are back on Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanfell, and I am now joined by former Carolina Panthers safety, who is now the head coach for Campbell for the Campbell University football team, Mike Minter. Thanks for joining the show, Mike. How's it going? It's going good. Thanks for having me. Hey, my pleasure. Now, I want to start this interview off by talking a bit about your high school days, as I see you were pretty talented in both football and basketball. Why did you decide to make a career uh, out of football instead of basketball? Well, you know what? I, I, I played basketball just for the fun of it, and um, but my passion and my love was always football, and so that you know to choose one over the other was easy because that was my passion and and my desire, and, and so you know, like I tell people all the time, man, follow your passion. Hey, you know that <laughs> that sounds great. Now you went on to uh, attend University of Nebraska. Uh, how did you know that that was a place that you wanted to attend? Well, you, from the third grade, I, from the third grade, I wanted to go there. I was watching them play um, in the '83 season, and also in the 1984 Orange Bowl against Miami. And and man, I just fell in love with Nebraska from that point. And and so from that point on, I just wanted to go to Nebraska. And so when Coach Osborne gave me a call, man, I was like, I'm I'm there, Coach. Let's go. <laughs> Now, early in your sophomore season, uh, you tore your left ACL and would uh, go on to miss the rest of the season. Uh, I got to get your thoughts on what uh, Vikings running back Adrian Peterson just did this past season, rushing over 2,000 yards. Uh, you know, what What are your thoughts on that? You know, I mean, you, you felt the pain before, so what are your thoughts on AP rushing over 2,000 yards last season? Well, I, I say, one, he has some great doctors. <laughs> so back, back in the time when I did, it was um, in the 90s. And, and so, you know, we were just getting to the point of being able to, to be able to help um, guys come back from that type of injury. And now guys are coming back, you know, four, five, six months later and, and able to uh, perform at a high level. So um, the other thing I would say is, you know, is kudos to him, man, to work that hard to, to get back on the football field and then perform at that level. Um, it's just an unbelievable feat. And so, um, man, I give my hats off to this guy. And when you suffered that torn ACL, did you know that you tore your ACL, or did you think it was something uh, n not as bad? No, I knew it right away. I mean, when you tear your ACL or or any injury um, like that, you don't know right away. And uh, so I knew right away something was wrong. I didn't know exactly what was wrong, but I knew something was wrong as soon as it popped. Now, Mike, let's fast forward to your uh, senior year where you would have an impressive season of recording 51 tackles and five interceptions. You started the first 10 games of that season playing safety, and then uh, for the final two games, you played linebacker. Uh, what, was that what was that transition like from playing safety to playing linebacker like? It was, it was real strange. I mean, I'm, I'm so used to playing 10, 12 yards deep and kind of seeing everything that's going on. Um, and all of a sudden you move up five yards away from the line of scrimmage and everything happens so fast. And, and it was like 3D. So you watch a movie that's in 2D and then all of a sudden you watch a 3D movie. It's a little different. <laughs> and uh, that's what it felt like when I moved up the linebacker. But I had fun. You know, the, the, the part I love about football is the physicality of it. And, and that linebacker, you're able to be physical and, and run and hit. And so, um, so I had fun doing that um, at the time that I did it for those two games. Now, you were a part of two, two national championship teams at the University of Nebraska. I mean, you know, growing up, you said you wanted to go there ever since the third grade, and you, you didn't go on to win not one, but two national championship games. That's a huge success. How awesome was that? And what was that feeling like, you know, winning those two national championships? Well, it was not like it. Uh, you know, you sit there, you, you think about it, you dream about it as a young kid, and, and then all of a sudden you get to go to a university you want to, and, and on top of that, you know, you're playing a national championship games. And it, 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 I mean, really, at my years in Nebraska, it felt like um, that was just the norm, that you, that you play a national championship games. And so, um, you know, it was very exciting um, to go back to back, and, and I believe that 1995 team is the best team to ever lay up uh, uh, cleats uh, on a college level. Um, I mean, we, you know, we had Tommy Frazier and, and you know, Lawrence Phillips and, 
and Amon Green on offense, and then you look at our defense where, where you know, we were shutting people out, and, and um, you know, everybody on our defense that, that played went to the league. I mean, so, I mean, when you think about things like that, uh, that 95 season, that 95 team uh, was a great, great football team to be a part of. Chris Shanfell here talking with former NFL safety Mike Minter. And in the second round of the 1997 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Mike Minter out of the University of Nebraska. What was that moment like for you to be drafted into the NFL? It was surreal. <laughs> we was all sitting there watching, and then I get a phone call from um, the Panthers and, you know, telling me that they was going to select me with the next pick, and the house erupted, everybody going crazy, and, and um, it was it was a surreal moment. It, it was like a, a weight being lifted off your shoulders, and and, um, and, and you just kind of felt, you know, as light as a feather, and um, everything at that moment began to come into um, come come to fruition, and and so uh, we was very excited. I was, and I was looking forward to trying to start the the new phase in my life as as being a national football uh, player. And when you were a rookie, did any of the veterans on that Panther squad make you or any of the other rookies do anything like you know carry the pads, bring food, or give you guys mess up haircuts like they do nowadays, Mike? <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure it was, it was all that going on, but I told my guys, we're not going to go down that route. <laughs> so so I, I had to go pick up chicken, I had to go pick up donuts. Um, I was almost late to uh, to the plane one time because I had to go pick up the chicken for the guys. and, and um, So I didn't carry pads or do anything like that, but, uh, but I was definitely uh, you know, into getting the donuts and the chicken for the veteran guys. Now, now, Mike, one of my former guests said they, they couldn't bring any of that cheap stuff. <laughs> no, they, no, they going to tell you where to go, okay? And, um, you know, being in Carolina where Krispy Kreme is, um, it, it makes it a, a whole lot easier to be able to go get donuts, um, with that being one of the best franchises of donuts around. So it made it real easy for me. Um, but, but you know, when you start talking about chicken, again, Bojangles is a, is a big-time um, chicken franchise here um, in the Carolinas, and so that's what they wanted. So you... You definitely had to go get what they wanted. <laughs> now, Mike, it was in your second season in the NFL where you suffered a staph infection, which led to uh, complications of surgery uh, to, to your left knee. Were you afraid that you would have to deal with that those problems with the knee again uh, throughout the rest of your career? Well, I was afraid that my career was over because I, after I had um, healed up from that, and you know, my knee really didn't respond very well, and so it was hurting. I couldn't stop running. Um, it was just very, very painful. And um, you know, a lot of guys, you know, ninety-nine percent of the guys who have a staph infection in their knee, their career is over. And so uh, I'm real thankful um, because I believe God healed it and, and gave me an opportunity to um, play eight more years in the National Football League. With, with, you know, pain-free. Uh, and, you know, doctors couldn't understand how I was playing. And they would look at my x-rays every year. And, and I really never uh, passed a physical. Uh, for those eight years that I played, uh, after that staph infection, uh, I really failed every physical. But they let me play because I could play it. And um, it wasn't painful. And uh, they couldn't understand it. But uh, So it, it, was a, it was a great eight years after that injury. Uh, but I was very thankful that I was able to uh, come back and, and uh, perform. And you said you, pat, you, I mean, you failed like almost every physical. Uh, I gotta think you gotta be pretty thankful to the Carolina Panthers organization that they they want to keep you around, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's that's my organization. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I, I never leave those two organizations that I play for. Uh, Carolina Panthers in Nebraska. I mean, that, that's that's what I I bleed all day long, and, and uh, I'm so very thankful for the for the Panthers and and uh, Mr. Jerry Richardson uh, standing beside me the whole time and and uh, give me that opportunity. You guys are listening to Sportsman Radio. I'm your host Chris Shanfeld, talking with former NFL safety Mike Minter. Mike, it was uh, that 2003 season where you guys would conduct, where you and the team would go on to uh, have a have just a very successful season and make it to the the biggest game of them all, the Super Bowl. Can you tell us about the journey yourself and the Carolina Panthers team had to make in order to make it to that game? Well, you know what? That was 
was a magical season. I mean, 03, uh, I think we was called the Cardiac Cats. <laughs> and uh, that was a year that we would come from behind and win games. I think the first game of that season, we played Jacksonville. And, and um, at the time, I think Rodney Pete was starting, and, and he didn't do nothing the first half. Then we put in this this no-name guy named Jake DeLone. And <laughs> Jake DeLone brought us all the way back and, and threw the winning touchdown pass to Ricky Pro, and, and we go on to win that first game against Jacksonville, and that's how the season of 2003 was. It was about, you know, us sticking together, us finding a way to win. And um, at that time, you know, we played the Dallas Cowboys, um, you know, that first playoff game in, in, in our stadium, and, and we beat them, and, and then now we're moving on, and now we got to go on the road for two straight weeks and uh, beat uh, um, St. Louis in a, a double overtime game, and I mean, and, and Steve Smith catching a, a dig route and, and took it about 60 yards and, and win the game. And, and then now we got to go to Philadelphia. And uh, that was at the time when Philly had lost two straight NFC Championship games. And so they was like, okay, the third time a charm, they going to win. We was underdogs. We went in there and just demolished them. And, uh, and now we're headed to the Super Bowl. So that whole season of 2003 was an unbelievable run. And, and uh, man, we had, a, we had a lot of guys with a lot of great character, great defense, great offense. Steven Davis running all over people. Um, Steve Smith, that's when he really came into his own. And, and Moussin Muhammad on the offensive side of the ball. And, and of course, you're on defense. You got the big linemen up front with Chris Jenkins and, and Preston Buckner and, and uh, Mike Rucker and Julius Peppers. Man, we was, we was a very good football team and uh, very lucky uh, to be a part of that. That, uh, 2003 magical season. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. You're getting fired up. I love it, Mike. <laughs> now, now, Mike, you're, you're a former player. You're now a coach, and I, I think you'll be able to answer this. How does a team go from one and fifteen in 2001, seven and nine in 2002, and eleven and five in 2003, and make it to the Super Bowl? You know what? I, I think really at the end of the day, it starts with leadership. And it starts with a vision uh, from that leader. And um, Coach Fox came in. I mean, you know, one in fifteen, losing fifteen games in a row. You had a down football team, but you had a you had a hungry football team and a talented football team. Um, and when Coach Fox came in, he gave us direction and he gave us belief and hope that you know what we can win. We can turn this around. And we believed in what he was saying. I think as a football coach, you got to be able to sell your program and sell sell your vision and he did a great job of doing that and we bought into it and, and so we went to work and one of the things that he taught us is how to compete early and once he's taught us how to compete he, he taught us how to win you know, we lost a lot of games, close uh, football games, when we went one and fifteen. We lost a lot of close football games. So he taught us how to win, how to how to finish, and and um, and then from that point, it was how do you deal with success, and and then from there, it's about winning championships, and and so Coach Fox did that, and and you know, I'm in a very similar situation here um, at Campbell University where we, you know, uh, went one and ten last year, and, and so. I I understand what these guys are going through, and now it's my job um, sitting on the other side is to get them vision and, 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 and um, hope and, and um, direction on where they need to go. And I think you'll do well at coaching over there at Campbell University. And, Mike, unfortunately, you guys did fall just short uh, to the New England Patriots in that Super Bowl 38 game, 32-29. to You broke your foot in the third quarter of that game and still finished the game and racked up a career-high 18 tackles. Uh, were you were, When you were playing, did you know that your foot was broken or was all the intensity and, and whatnot just filling you up and you couldn't even really tell? No, I knew right away. Um, very similar to when I tore my ACL. I knew, I knew uh, my foot was broke right away when the, when I planted and, and made it made the tackle. And and I came to the sideline. I just told the trainer, "Look, don't don't take my um, shoe off. I know I broke my foot." And he looking at me like you broke your foot. <laughs> I'm like yeah, just just tied up tight and uh, tape it up, and I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna finish this game because um, I don't know if I ever get back to this Super Bowl. So I'm gonna go out there and finish this game. Try to go win it, and and um, 
so yeah, it, it was a it was a tough time. But um, when you're in that ball game, man, um, the drilling is going. Um, the only time that I felt the pain is after every single play. Uh, once the play was stopped, man, my foot felt like it was going to fall off. Dang. Now, Mike, looking back, would you say that playoff run and appearance in Super Bowl 38 helped you understand the game more and uh, give you more success as a football player down the road? I think it definitely helped. Um, you know, again, I, I, I've been around some great football coaches and Tom Osborne, um, a high school coach, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, Coach Fox. And, and um, I mean, so I've, I've been around a lot of great football and, and, and been blessed in that sense. So it, it was definitely something that taught me um, how to deal with adversity, how to overcome it. Because up to that point, I was winning all my life. And so um, until I got to the Panthers and we kind of went through that that tough period and, and, and so it taught me how to come through that and, and um, come out on the other side victorious. And on August uh, 7th, 2007, Mike, you announced your retirement. How did you know you were ready to put up the cleats? Well, you know what? My knees started hurting real bad. <laughs> so so I, I, I can remember coming into that training camp. I knew it was going to be my last season. And and, um, and so when I got there, I kind of started to go through it. But my body just wasn't responding um, the way that I wanted it to. And I didn't want to go out and, and just play football, just be playing football. If I couldn't play at the level I, I'm accustomed to playing at. And so, you know, at that point, I, I just kind of um, knew. Um, I remember the last practice um, that, that we had, and, and I kind of came out there and, and um, went through that practice knowing it was my last one. And, and then after that, I went in to speak to um, Coach Fox and Marty Herney, who was a general manager at the time. And, and, um, and then that next day, I went to go talk to Mr. Richardson to make sure he was okay with it. And, and uh, me and him cried and sat there. And, and, and um, you know, he basically saw me grow up. I mean, I came in a young man and left a grown man and and um, and so it was a very very emotional time for both of us and and uh, we both um, agreed that it was okay and and um, and so I stepped away from the game. And as we know, it's very, very rare to play your entire football career with just one organization. Even even great ones like, you know, Joe Montana, Brett Favre, Ronnie Lott, you know, they, they haven't played their whole career with just one team. But you, Mr. Mike Minter, were able to play all 10 years in Carolina. How grateful are you for that? Oh, uh, you know what? I, that was one of my goals. Uh, I'm just so thankful again for for God to give me the ability to do that, and and, and just to open up the doors to make it happen. I mean, I had three um, head coaches. I mean, you, you don't normally last through three head coaches, and and um, I was blessed enough to do that. And and so, man, I, I tell you, three contracts there with the with the Panthers. Um, again, it was it was um, it was a dream come true, and. Uh, uh, I'm just thankful that I was able to do it at, with that organization. Chris Shanfell here talking with Mike Minter. Mike, and now today you are the head coach of the, the Campbell Field. Uh, the Campbell Fighting Camels at Campbell University. You're the head football coach up there. Uh, you've won two state champions coaching high school, and I see you have some uh, college coaching experience at uh, Liberty University. Are you excited uh, to coach Campbell University this upcoming season, Mike? Absolutely. I mean, you know, one of the things when I decided that when I was going to leave high school and go up to the college level, I was going to be a head coach. And, and um, you know, it, was, it happened in, in two years. And so now um, I'm here. I got the reins to um, um, to, to the ship. And um, so now um, I got to put my program in place and, and see what we can do. And um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the opportunity. I'm excited about the challenge. And, um and, man, we're looking forward to it. I got some great coaches on my staff. Um, I know a lot of people say that, but I really do. I mean, I got some guys that think the game. I wanted to go out and get individuals that was thinkers opposed to people who just been around the game or been around coaching. Um, and, um, you know, I, I told them that we got to be thought leaders. We, we got to be ahead of the curve and ahead, uh, ahead of changing um, the way things are done in the National Football League. I'm, I'm blessed to be able to you know, have the business acronym that I have. 
um, you know, being able to start, um, you know, many successful businesses um, after I got done playing football. So to be able to bring that uh, to to college football and and um, uh, the leadership and and, and the plan, it, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to go through this process. Mike, I'm wishing you nothing but the best this upcoming season, man. I got to say, it's been a true pleasure to have you on the show. Now, before I let you go, I have just a few quick, fun questions to get to know you a bit, and then I'll let you go. Does that sound all good? Absolutely. All right, Mike, what is your favorite movie and TV show? Oh, man, favorite movie. Um, I will have to say um, Rocky. Love Rocky. Uh, probably my favorite uh, uh, movie, uh, favorite TV show. Uh, man, I like Scandal. That's a pretty good TV show right now. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, favorite thing to eat? Favorite thing to eat? Uh, chicken. You know, I'm a black guy, so I love chicken. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I, I'm a white I'm a white kid out here in Chicago, man. I, I gotta say that's my favorite thing to eat is uh, some buffalo chicken. Could never go wrong with it. That's right. <laughs> uh, favorite thing to do in your free time? Favorite thing to do in my free time, man. I, I, I love to read books. I uh, love to uh, you know play chess, um, and um, I, I, I love to just compete, man. Anything I can compete in. Playing cards, board games, you know, spending time with the kids, competing against them. Man, I, I love that. All right, all right. Now, uh, when when you were growing up, who was an athlete that you looked up to? Oh, man, Muhammad Ali is my guy. I mean, he, he's my number one guy. And I, I, I love watching him box. And, and uh, man, I remember when, when um, he fought... Um, um, Leon Spinks for the second time and beating for the championship, and I remember that fight. And, and um, so, you know, Muhammad Ali was a was a was a guy that I loved to watch. And, and then, as far as uh, you know, football was concerned, Tony Dorsett. Man, I was a Dallas Cowboys fan, being from Oklahoma, love the Cowboys. And so, Tony Dorsett, Drew Pearson, them guys like that, I I really love watching. And uh, so, you know, in basketball it was Magic Johnson and the Lakers. So that, that that was my guys that I that I grew up watching. Oh man, not not the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The, the Bulls. I, I was uh, uh, I was in high school to college uh, when the Bulls. You know, they started coming around in the nineties. So um, you know, I was a Lakers guy. So you you know, you guys beat us in the championship, man. And and they, they kind of they kind of broke my heart. And it took me a couple years to become a Michael Jordan fan. But once, once I did. I mean, he's the greatest, man. Nobody's better than him. Hey, man, I, I can't argue with you on that one. And, Mike, last but not least, what is something about Mr. Mike Minter that many people do not know about? Well, uh, man, I, I, I probably, the, probably the biggest thing is that I'm a big Michael Jackson fan. Hmm. So if you're going you to hear anything on my iPad or anything on my earphones that's going on, it's going to be Michael Jackson. I used to listen to him to get pumped up for every football game. People say, how can you listen to Michael Jackson to get pumped up for a game? I said, man, he's the greatest singer of all time, greatest entertainer of all time. You can't help but get excited when you listen to him. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That, that is awesome. Mike, I cannot thank you uh, enough for your time on the show tonight, man. I really appreciate it. It's been a true honor, but before I let you go, is there anything you'd like to plug on the air for myself and our listeners? No, sir. I think you did a great job, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Mike. Hopefully we can do it again in the future, and best of luck to uh, you and Campbell University football team.